With me is Pete Wishart, MP for Perth and North Perthshire, and the SNP's Westminster spokesperson for Home Affairs. Welcome, Pete. Thank Let's you. begin with this letter that you've written to the Home Office. Uh, explain what the letter was. Well, we were very saying. concerned when we saw the issue of the 84-year-old gentleman who was restrained by GEO, who unfortunately died because of this encounter. So I wrote to the, the, the Home Secretary to ask what was going on, what's the use of private security firms when it comes to this type of activity, and just to explain, get her to explain to me what actually happened under these cir circumstances, under the, what conditions these private security companies have been used. And uh, it's been an issue that's been taken up, and I think that we now have received a response, so we'll be looking to see how we actually from there. So what exact case was this? Because south of the border at Heathrow, of course, we've had this horrible case, 84-year-old uh, Alois Dvorak, Alzheimer's sufferer. Uh, this is Dungavel in South Lanarkshire. Yes, but we, we have Dungavel where, where there has been an, an appalling history of children being locked up for detention as people are waiting to be uh, taken out of the UK because of falling foul of any number of immigration requirements. So we have massive concerns about what's been happening there. We've been asking for the closing down of Dungable for a number of years, and particularly the, 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 the whole appalling prospect of children being locked up. And of course, GEO are associated with Dungable just as they're associated with some of these removals in, in England. So we remain very concerned about the operation of this company, and we hope very much to get just get them out of the way entirely when it comes to the Scottish issues. But even before Geo Group took over, 2010, Damien Green was saying they're not going to be locking up 17-year-olds. Deputy Prime Minister said teenagers wouldn't be. What, why are the we, government... We've heard this all the way through, you know, like as soon as this new government came in, it was a commitment from the Deputy Prime Minister that this was a practice that would stop. It hasn't. And we hear all sorts of excuses as to why this is still the case. Now, we call immediately for the ending of locking up of young people with children. I think it's just appalling. So does the government. Yes. But, like, just do it then, you know I mean? It's within their gift to actually ensure that this will happen. So far, they've failed to act. And I think it's come to the point now that we should be making sure that they do act on their promises when it comes to Dungavel. And as well as the rest of the deten detention centres across the United Kingdom, because it's, I think it's unacceptable to the whole of the British public that we are still practice in this barbaric exercise of locking up children. So, in a sense, you are united with the government. Why is the government not doing it? Is it incompetence? Is it corruption? Why are they not acting on what they say? Well, what, what they're saying is, in terms of process about removing people from the United Kingdom, it's still necessary, and under, under special circumstances, it's still allowed. But what these special circumstances is becoming is routine, and this is why we're still seeing more and more of this activity. It's, it is dreadful what we see, and I, I really hope that the government acts on its very clear intention to end this practice, but so far we've seen very little evidence of that. So, at the moment... Uh, uh, is it the immigration minister? The immigration minister just <laughs> left. Uh, who replied to your letter saying that they would look into this? Well, what I had, I was, when, when I raised these concerns about the gentleman um, who unfortunately died, we got a response from the Home Office who said that they would, they would enact some sort of investigation into the operation of private sector companies in this type of activity. But this, this, this inquiry will take 18 months. So we're left in the situation where these type of incidences will be possibly be repeated, where this excessive force on very frail, vulnerable people may still be enacted in the United Kingdom. And that's totally unacceptable. They should be acting now. We don't see there's any need or requirement to have private sector companies doing this type of activity when it's a, it's a responsibility of the border agency of the United Kingdom. So like, what they should be doing now is looking at this properly, finding out what's happened, and asking some serious questions about private sector companies like GEO. So in an independent Scotland, you cancel the contract? Oh, absolutely, within a minute. And what we will do is approach these issues much more sensitively. Like We take these responsibilities very seriously in Scotland. We want nothing to do with this type of activity. And particularly the unsavoury scenes that we've seen recently, I mean, these are something that appall the, the common decency that we have in Scotland about treating guests to our country. But until an independent Scotland, I don't know what the Labour benches uh, think about this, whether it be uh, in Edinburgh or in London, uh, Geo Group, they run things in Guantanamo, no. there are continuous inquiries, SFO, A multinational Ford. private security company, you know, like having contracts like this in their nation, I think it's just awful, particularly this association with Guantanamo. But there's nothing one can do at the moment no, for the no. people who are at these private sector there, there, uh, there isn't other entertainment than, camps. Other than trying as much as possible to embarrass this government into action, you know, like I think that they were actually quite shocked about what they saw with the treatment of the 84-year-old gentleman. And I think what we've got to do as much as possible is to highlight these issues as they emerge 
and force this government into actually doing some action. I mean, like, for goodness sake, these are people who are vulnerable, who have been treated like this, handcuffed, you know, like, and then losing their life as a result of that type of intervention is, is not acceptable anymore. And I think that, you know, like, the more we do to highlight these issues, the more progress we'll make in ensuring it won't happen again. So when it comes to another private contractor, Circo, the SFO is investigating it, they've just won a six-year deal. <laughs> What more can parliamentarians do? I mean, you're saying the government are trying to look into this, but they're actually awarding contracts at the well, same time. Ab absolutely, and I think that what we need to do is have a, possibly have a, a look at a proper audit of all private sector security companies that are working for government, asking them exactly what they are doing, why that cannot be done by people who actually work for the government, for our civil servants, people who are employed to do these things responsibly and properly. I'm unhappy about all this activity going to the private sector, but there's, there's the regulation is much more lax, but there isn't the same compliance when it comes to making sure that people are doing these tasks properly. So I think we need to have a look properly all over the sector, find out how many of these private sector companies are working, what they're up to, and what sort of issues are starting to emerge. But until such an inquiry occurs, G4S, Circo, yes. Geo Group Limited, you think we'll see more cases like this? Uh, absolutely. I think this is just the tip of what's probably a very deep iceberg. And I think that as we go forward with this, you know, we will see more and more difficulties and issues. Now, we saw the incident where this man unfortunately died. That might be a bit of a warning shot to them about how they treat some of these issues. But um, I'm pretty certain that as we go forward in these 18 months, as we await this review, that we'll see many more incidences such as this. But apart from deaths, when it comes to just uh, contractual obligations or a financial side, the Ministry of Justice has been settling with some yeah, of these yeah. companies. Yeah, absolutely. So um, what are you going to ask about that? Well, I think we've got an opportunity as members of Parliament to, to ask the government how these things are going to be working. We have opportunity question times and, and being able to have correspondence with the ministers in which we can get some sort of revealing responses. I think our job is just to continue to keep the pressure on government, ask them what they're up to when it comes to these sort of things, and just to express our general dissatisfaction that this government feels the need to involve private sector companies in this type of activity. You probably don't care that much south of the border, but if uh, uh, a Labour government won uh, in London, would that make any difference, do you think? Because they were the party at the forefront it of uh, It'd probably be worse. I mean, we all remember the anti-civil libertarian state that New Labour created. I mean, this was the party of ID cards and 46-day detention. I mean, like, the, the Labour's track record when it comes to these issues isn't any better than Conservatives. It was them that made sure that Dungavel was filled to capacity when it came to these issues. Did I trust Labour to do these things better? <laughs> Not at all. We could see with the ex pre previous experience of Labour governments that, if anything, they take a dimmer view when it comes to these type of issues. So how would a Scottish government actually go about stopping these private contractors once these contracts have already been made for numbers of years? Well, we've outlined our plans for immigration and asylum in our white paper, which we're asking people to consider when they're voting for the Scottish independence referendum. What we will do is separate immigration from asylum, ensure that people who do come to our country under great duress usually will be treated appropriately and given support and services. We're intending to set up an asylum agency which would look at these things specifically and get it separated from the whole immigration question. And this is one of the big issues and difficulties we have down here with the way that the Home Office approaches. Everything things here and bundled together and there are two intentions when it comes to things is to stop people coming to the UK and kick as many people out that they don't like we're not going to approach it like that in Scotland we'll approach it much more sympathetically but even when people die these private companies continue to get contracts would they be able to sue you for breach of contract if uh, a Scottish government said no more private detention camps? Well, we won't sign any contract with them. That's but they've already been signed. That's, with the, that's up to the UK to, to, to deal with and negotiate. As we go forward as an independent Scotland, we're looking to do things entirely differently. We will not use private sector companies when it comes to these things. In fact, we're looking to close Dungavel almost immediately if we come to power and it won't be an issue for us at all. We think that these things have to be dealt with sensitively. You can't deal with these things sensitively by working with private sector companies who have a appalling track records in places like Guantanamo. That's not the way that we look to resolve these difficulties in an independent Scotland. This just will not happen. Pete Wishart, thank you. Thank you.